So uh, this happened about four months back. We made a big presentation to a call which was made by Indian government. So there were more than 60 people presented. Uh, three were funded. So this is an enhanced program on malaria biology. And we have had a re-look at ourselves. We are seven uh, uh, principal investigator. So you can see now the, the reorganized focus is on proteases, those are the drug targets, complexes, which are the basis for, 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 for vaccine development, as well as for doing really basic work on receptor ligand interaction at the, at the, at the entry level of the merozoids. Uh, Chetan Chitnas has, uh, this is recently published work, we are sort of digging deep into the biology. Now we know that the surface molecules are not the only ones which are involved in invasion processes, except what we do know at the time of invasion, this is what you see at the, lo uh, at the lower, is a, is a malaria parasite. We, earlier it was believed that the only molecule on the surface are involved in the interaction with the red blood cell which you see at the top. But now we know that the time of, just at the time of interaction, a lot of proteins are released. And these are not otherwise available to immune system or for any other thing. Now we know there are a large number of proteins in the rop trees and micronemes. So Chetan is looking at seriously at, and we know now that this is just the signaling pathway. So the calcium goes up or potassium goes down, these proteins are released. So this is recently published work. But what it also allows us to look at some of these proteins then become extremely good candidates for drug and vaccine development. So this work has moved on very well. Uh, this is our sort of reorganized, rejuvenated malaria vaccine program. I've been telling for past 15 years. We've done our, our vaccine trial has gone on extremely well. We just finished looking at the data. Uh, this has allowed us to learn how to take uh, make the research, go to a company, produce GMP grade material, go to the, the go to authorities, and finally finish a human trial. We now believe we have much better uh, candidates, and I'll just show you the current rationale. Uh, we know now there are a large number of uh, receptors on the red blood cell and large number of proteins on the merozoid which make interaction b before it enters. There were only two or three now. After the genomes were sequenced, we know a large number of them. So the new strategy or, or, or the belief is that you need multiple receptor blocking rather than a single one. If you have only a single one, there will be alternate way of getting into. So if you want a careful intervention, you might want to look at three or four different receptors ligand interaction. So uh, our current load is that we have, uh, so we have, we have not a very large group, but given that we are fairly large, so we've divided works between three, four of us, and this is going extremely well. And I'm not going to show you, that. this is the last, uh, very recently we presented to the Gates Foundation. I am not want you to labor at this, except for the rationale that I was trying to give you earlier. What you see on the left is a single protein antibody raised in rabbits and do an in vitro assay. You get about 50% inhibition with the best protein that you, that we have called aspargin rich protein recently discovered by my group. When you start putting them together, you don't see only additive effect, you see synergy effect. These are the best anywhere in the literature inhibition that you can see in vitro. And the, the slide that I do not have, which is slightly better than, so we can now block up to 19 to 95% in vitro. What happens in vivo, we do not know. Now we are funded by the Gates Foundation to do the, look at the JVAC3. So both these projects are now funded. And now we know how to move very fast now. So I think a couple of years time, all these things will be in human trials. It would worry anyone who's been listening to us for so long saying that you have a human trial on one, then second, then third, and fourth. But this is exactly what the field is all about in malaria. So what everybody seems to be thinking that instead of going to humans every time, can there be a screen uh, before? So if you have, let's say, 10 antigens from Australia, from England, from India. So there's a consortium now with the, funded by Gates Foundation where all of us have agreed to give our materials and a human phase one, phase two screen is being set up, one in Oxford. We are trying to set up one at ICGEV. So this would be a challenge model in humans 
against the actions of this will allow us. But anybody who wants to know more about this will be very happy. We hope we'll have this facility in India in about a couple years of time. But we do have access to the facility at, at NIH. Uh, so therefore, all these things that I'm putting here will go through the human screen first. Uh, I just want to oh, just go back to, this is the TB work, which we <coughs> recently presented in Uganda. So as you remember, we were doing systems biology of TB. This work is now matured. We have now five uh, principal investigators, all working in, in tuberculosis group. So the first flush of uh, published paper, which was published in Cell, has provided huge number of leads. And these leads have now given us further results. This has happened in past two, two months. In fact, one of them is passed last, last week. So the leads that have come out from the genome-wide uh, uh, questions asking have led into a grand challenge of war to Connery. Uh, number two, which is uh, alternate strategy for chemotherapy, a company has already come up front. This company and ICG with Delhi Company are working together. I don't want to steal Connery's thunder. I wait for the CSA, but this work has moved very fast. So this is recently funded by Gates Foundation in a grand challenge award. But even more importantly, the work which came out from the, the, the last year's uh, genome-wide screening is now has led to a network program which ICGB Delhi component would be coordinating. And I'd be very happy if member states, anyone who works on TB gets involved in this. But this is going to be a huge facility. Not going to be. It is already a huge facility for screening, for all sorts of work on tuberculosis. And these guys have been quite productive. So. In one year, they have a cell paper, PLOS pathogen, PNS, uh, JBC6 papers, and so these are some of the publications that they've come. This is now moved into, this is the work which I am uh, progressing. We recently presented it to the Gates Foundation again. Here, uh, the rationale here is when you have infections such as TB, or for that matter, even cancer. For lung cancer, this is already functioning that given the technology today, you should be able to, is there, first of all, is there a proof of principle that volatiles that come out in your excreted material, breath or urine, would have a signature of the disease or not? This field has grown extremely fast. People are looking at all sorts of diseases, especially kidney diseases. We looked at tuberculosis, and first of all at urine, the, but the breath one has moved very fast. Currently, we are involved in, uh, in Ford, Ford Center. Uh, we are getting samples from Ford Center with 500 patients. We believe there is a signature, but we need to now uh, uh, confirm that signature that you can differentiate uh, pulmonary TB from healthy individual. Should that go through to the Gates Foundation, as I told you, has funded us for more than a million dollars to convert that into a breathalyzer. So we call it electric nose, and we have now a collaboration with a company in, in, in Pasadena who are part of the project. So if this, I say if is a very big if, if this signature is, re, signature is of seven molecules, it's not one single molecule. If this signature is a valid one, conversion of this into a nanotechnology-based electric nose apparently look much easier than the signature. So this has moved extremely fast. So I thought I just wanted to share this with you. I, we should have analyzed all the samples that we've collected by end of August. By early September or by October, we should know if that the, our preliminary data is good enough on a large number of samples. So that's, what, that's, where, the project, that's where the project is right now. Uh, this is uh, something has surprised me. I've always said that this is already in the market. Naveen Khanna has been able to modify in the previous design. So this is now is a bestseller. I'm surprised the country, member states especially, which have dengue infection, uh, they have neither asked us for the technology we keep saying that technology transfer, IPR issues, but these are the technologies available off the shelf for asking. And these things are not in the lab. These things are in the market. So uh, dengue detection has been made extremely easy by technology developed at ICGEV. I'm very excited about this project, but not detailed. We just 
got the patent down on it. This is a this is the rationale for dengue vaccine. I'm not going to go into the detail. Of it. it just looks no worse than Sanofi vaccine, which was in phase three trial. In fact, it's much, much easier to make than Sanofi's vaccine, which is on the yellow fever backbone. This is a subunit vaccine. All the four dengue viruses, extra domains have been cloned together. This is now in collaboration with, with NIH. So all the work is being done at ICGB Delhi, and all the testing is being done at NIH. I'm very happy to report to you that in a couple of months' time, the challenge experiments will be done on a mouse called AG129, and we should know the results. I'm very extremely hopeful. For this. So I thought I'll just share the, the movement in this uh, direction. So please come and use the facilities. We on campus have, Lauren showed you, we, I'll show you an example of, uh, this is a nice example of collaboration uh, and I think these facilities are e easily available. There was a crystal structure solved in ICGB by Amit Sharma's guru, but the part of the structure was fuzzy because, because that portion of the protein won't, uh, RNA won't crystallize. And he collaborated on the campus with the NMR. We have a 700 and 500 megahertz machine on the campus. So they were able to sort out what they could not see in crystal structure. And this is an example of uh, doing fairly smart structural biology. Uh, NMR is going to be, to my mind, even a better tool than GC mass spec for looking at, uh, as I told you, this field is advancing extremely fast. That you do analysis or, 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 or your without inv having any invasive, you don't look at the blood. You could really look at uh, urine in this case. And this is, again, published work, so you could differentiate between, and these are the f early days, but from the way I see the field growing, that this could be extremely fast way of looking at uh, disease versus healthy individual. The proof of principle for hepatitis B and hepatitis E individuals, it's already published work. So I'm going to just, this is my last couple of minutes, this is a new center, as it were, within ICGB. This is not funded from ICGB sources. This is funded entirely from a proposal that we put up, a very competitive proposal. As I speak with you, we are hiring. Again, our, our philosophy is if you're starting a group, you should have at least four or five or six people working on the same problem. Otherwise, I guess you get lost in the field. So this would have six principal investigators. Three are already in place, two more we are hiring, and this is what they're going to focus on. This is their early success. So they're designing enzymes with much better uh, specificity. So they already are, uh, this is again, as I said, published work. Uh, I don't think this is the way to go, although initially you can publish papers. So the, fine, the, the real way to go would be, to my mind, this. And this is a f field where for next three, four, five years, we want to spend time and money. India has a huge uh, source of algae, both marine algae or otherwise, and I dare say that's true for all member states, lots of member states. And algae can be a good source for biofuels. But algae on its own, but you need to then do things uh, on algae, and luckily we have very good facility and expertise for chloroplast transformation. And this work has already begun. And I've shown you this before, but this is the last one I want to share with you. This is the, uh, yeah, this is the last one. Yeah, this is now, uh, this is the work for past eight or 10 years by Sunil Mukherjee's group, who look at microRNA-based protection in plants, biotic stress. So he already has plants of tomatoes which, were, uh, which are now fully protected. So we have a company now uh, already signed MOUs with them. So these things are going to go to the field now. So you can modify, but you don't have to depend only on BT toxin, but there are other methods of uh, delivery. So I'm going to stop you because we have to take you uh, somewhere else. Uh, Ah, don't look at this man, look at the woman. <laughs> woman is president of India. So, 
We are very proud of Amit Sharma having done extremely. This is the top, the highest award given in India to a scientist for scientist work below 45 years old. Very good one to get. Thank you very much.